Hi everyone, welcome back to Poetology. Last year I did two videos on online journals that accept poetry, especially poetry journals, but also prose and visual work. And as I was doing that, people kept making more and more suggestions of journals I should check out, and to this day I haven't really done that. So I have a long list of journals for us to look at. If you're anything like me, you have heard of journals that you think I'm going to check them out as soon as I can, and then you don't do that. So this is an opportunity to sit down with a cup of tea and have a look at a range of online resources that you can read and also send work to. It's a really good way of getting acquainted with what's around without having to do too much research by yourself. And I will make several because there are many of them to go through. I hope you enjoy this one and I'll see you on the other side. The first is Second Chance Lit, which is a place for previously rejected poetry and prose. And the idea of this magazine is that we get so many rejections. If you have a poem rejected, you can try your luck again with Second Chance Lit. The masthead is David Wasserman in the US. You can view issues here just by clicking on them and read different pieces here. Here is Pamina Press, an independent cross-cultural multilingual experimental publisher based in the UK, Canada and Iran. It's a very beautiful website with a more international mission. There's a whole team behind it and you can view the magazine online. Let's have a look at Full House Literary. It was founded in 2020 as an online magazine and it includes podcasts, workshops, reviews, festivals and there will be print issues soon. It's run by volunteers. Here's issue four. With many options for viewing, let's check out the PDF. I like PDFs because I'm not always online. Yeah, this looks great. I love how it's structured with cards, the sad clowns the dragonfly, and corresponding prose pieces. So that's the tarot issue. I think it's an amazing idea. When it comes to submission, here are the guidelines. Submissions are currently closed, so we'll have to wait for the next issue. Adjacent Pineapple has a very interesting title. Uh, snack Revenge and Adjacent Pineapple are live and online spaces for writing, discussion and performance based in Glasgow. Edited by Colin Hurd and guest editors. Let's check out issue 6. This is what it looks like. So it's a very fruity website. Let's see what Nat Reha submitted for this. Here we go. It's an amazing collage piece, actually. Wow. Collage and poetry together which is something I love. Submissions, deadline for inclusion in issue seven is 30th September. But I have the impression that it means last year because here it says that submissions are closed. So next time. Next on the list is Osmosis. You can immediately see the latest writing on the first page and latest tweets as well, which shows that they are quite active. Osmosis Press was established in early 2021 with an aim to muddy the boundaries between categorization of contemporary writing practice. We publish work that resists the definition of poetry, novel, short story, story, non-fiction, memoir, and everything in between. The editor-in-chief is Bryony Hughes, and here is the rest of the team. Beautiful print here, featured writing. These look mostly like prose pieces. Okay, good news. Submissions are open. This looks like you can send it at any time. And same for the Collisions print series, which means visual work is also possible here, as well as reviews, essays and interviews. So all of these three categories are open and this window here is closed, but you can send something and it might be included on the website. 
poem Atlas showcases visual poetry. It is an exhibition platform and occasional publisher of books and object poems curated by Astra Papra Christodoulou. So this is mostly visual poetry. You can see the online exhibition. Look at this. For example, this. So object poetry, visual poetry, amazing pieces to look at. Eurasia poetry, stitched. I've never seen that, actually. Stitched over Eurasia poetry. That looks great. Yeah, beautiful. For submissions, they are currently closed for submissions, but if you follow them on social media, you will know when the window opens again. I'm curious to see what's in the shop. They also publish books or prints or really cool face masks, bittersweet TikToks, etc. Let's have a look at Acropolis, an online poetry magazine founded in 2021. Many new journals seem to have emerged out of lockdown, which is lucky for us poets. Home for temples, ruins darkness and myth. We love all kinds of poetry, but are particularly drawn to dark emotional pieces. Poems surging with imagery, surreal gothic, the depths of the abyss. I also like this. We want that poem you love that keeps getting rejected. And you can contact them directly by email. Submit. Issue 4 is unthemed. The submissions are closed. Publication is planned for this summer, so it looks like another window might open. You can send up to three poems, artwork, photographs to Acropolis Journal. Can we have a look at the issues? Okay, this was the first issue. Okay. Here we go. Simon Alderwick. I built my kingdom out of mud. I crawled on my hands and knees through a maze of grass until I felt like stopping. I'll let you read the rest directly on the website. Let's have a look at Reside. Reside Zine is a bi-annual online zine that features work that resides outside the norm. A literary and art scene aiming to provide a home for untold stories. For original poetry, short fiction, I'm not even sure what CNF is, experimental pieces, articles, photography and art. So let's have a look at About Us here. Here is the team of Reside. And here are past issues. The most recent is Yellow. You can download the PDF. Wow. Okay, yes. Includes many artists and writers here. We've got a poem. It's very beautifully illustrated. Very consistent with the theme. It looks like it's very focused on the theme. Photographs, paintings, poems. Great. When it comes to submissions, April, so right now, you can submit for issue 12 on the theme of hunger. So that's good news. And you need to use a submission form, not an email. Here is Selkuth Station. Let's see. Meaning strange, unusual, rare, unfamiliar, marvellous, wondrous. And it's pronounced Selkuth originating from Middle English and Old English. It is a small press dedicated to supporting and promoting the work of indie artists, writers, gamers, and any other creative entrepreneurs who want to get their work out there, both online and in print. Here is the editorial team. You can see that they publish poems and flash fiction directly on their first page. I wonder if the blog is the same? Yes. That's it. If you click on blog, you get a calendar of all the months. And here, all the posts. Poetry, flash fiction, short story, review, memoir, interview, art and project. And poetry, for example, the most recent one is An Attenuation of Vapors by Jesse Mixick. And you can read it. So that's how it's presented. Let's have a look at submissions. It is open for blog submissions. They will not be open for chapbook submissions until 2023 at the earliest. So 
I'm glad to know that they are publishing chapbooks, but it looks like it's going to be a while before new work is selected for that again. And the guidelines are here. They can accept bilingual work, which is not that frequent. That's really great. As always, make sure you have a look at the guidelines. I am very excited about Powders Press. It's a quarterly online journal of queer writing by LGBTQIA plus writers publishing fiction and poetry that explores the intersection of sexuality, gender, class, politics, and identity. Submissions are open. Let's have a look. Here are the guidelines. But submissions for issue 3 on gender are open. I need to bookmark this. The deadline is next month. And it's exclusive to trans and non-binary writers only. Okay, I'm very happy I just discovered this because I want to send something if I can. There's another chance to participate. This one is for people who are neurodivergent and they can submit in the month of June. Then the next issue is later, it will be in August, called Masquerade. And this is open to all queer people. Whoever you are, there's a good chance, if you're LGBTQ, that you can submit to at least one of these three issues, which is really good news. I'm even more excited about this publication now. Let's have a look at the latest issue. This is what it looks like. Yeah. Okay, great. Nice selection. Contributors. And this is what the poetry looks like on the page. Some short fiction as well. It looks really good. Powders Press was born out of the desire for greater representation of LGBTQIA plus experiences in literature. Edited by Scott Aaron Tate. He is also the fiction and poetry editor for Queerlings magazine, so they are pretty busy. Finally, Cult of Cleo. Click to submit. That's a very simple front page. Let's click on the fish. Poetry, one to five poems, requirements. You need a Google account, but it looks like you can submit right now. There is no date for submission. You can just go for it. There are three co-creators. It's based in New York. And here are the issues. Issue zero and issue one. Another new journal started in 2022. Right, and here you can have a look at the magazine. Let's go full page for this. Very nice. And that's it for our magazines today. So these were 11 new online journals. I have more, as I said, so I will come back with another video series. Let me know if you have work that you would like to send or if you are acquainted with any of these publications and enjoy reading their published work. Because these are very accessible poems, you can read them for free. It's a really good way to have access to what is going on without having to pay in order to be able to read. You don't need to have money, you don't need to be in London for this. So enjoy these free resources and make sure you read these poets who worked hard to be published. I hope you have a lovely Easter and I'll see you again very soon. Bye!